Hello everyone and welcome back to the Spiegel Mom Scraps channel. It's Caitlin here with another process video. Don't forget to use my code Caitlin15 for your next Spiegel Mom Scraps order. Today I am back with my page kits from uh, January here and I'm excited to be almost done with them but I was really excited to do this idea I had once I saw this paper. So I'm simply going to chevron cut this out, nothing too fancy here, just kind of following the lines to try to make it even all the way across. But if you guys have been watching my last few videos here on Speaking of Scraps, I've been doing my favorite easy way to use sequins on the layout. And today I'm featuring something that I like to call the drip effect. I'm not sure if that's a good name for it or not, but essentially the sequins rain down parts of the layout. Um, and I sneak peek this over on my Instagram and you guys loved it. So I'm really excited to be sharing it here. So I'm going to do that on the top and bottom and I want to make sure the zigzags are going into each other. Um, I don't want them facing opposite ways. I want them to face inward to, towards the layout so I can focus on my photos. And I am going to add a bit of washi at the top, sort of serving as like another layer of pattern paper, but I wanted to bring in more of that mint color that's in the chevron piece, so I pull that out. And then I also pull out this brighter pink. Now the brighter pink uh, washi tapes that I'd pulled out were mainly because of this paper. This is one of the first papers I'd pulled out to make my embellishment kit to go with my page kits. So I wanted to use it while I had it out. So I do the same thing to the bottom, um, as you guys can see. And now I'm going to start layering my photos with some paper. I've been doing a lot of layering behind my photos on these past few layouts, um, even on my personal channel when I've been using my page kits. Um, there's a lot of scraps that come with making page kits, um, which I wasn't really thinking through when I started making my page kits. So when I started with the three to four pages, um, in each page kit. That's a little too much once you get going on a page kit um, set like these. If you guys are doing coordinating page sets like I did where all the pages essentially can go together, um, I would recommend doing maybe some with just two pages in them to give you sort of a starting point and give you those 12 by 12s that you need to create a 12 by 12 layout. But other than that, you really don't need that much because um, I've included the six by six paper pads. So I do have a lot of options, but I want to make sure I'm using my scraps up as I go. So I end up pulling out some yellows, light blues, and then uh, I even have some cream colors and some pinks. And again, most of those are just scraps, but usually when I layer photo or layer paper behind my photos, I tend to make sure that one layer at the end goes all the way around. That way the loose layers kind of uh, get thrown into the mix and they're kind of secure within that photo. So they don't kind of, you know, rampage out onto the layout. So I usually like to do that, but totally up to preference. Sometimes you like the jagged edges and sometimes I don't. Um, but with the clean cuts of the uh, chevron border at the top there, I figured I should just leave it as is and kind of keep them clean and in place for the photos. So I have two photos here, and this is when we explored the outside portion of the Botanical Gardens in Washington, D.C. And of course, I know I say this in every video, but if you guys haven't seen, I'm working on D.C. pages all month long, so if you guys are working on a D.C. album, or anything sort of like a um, little adventure. I think that this is a good series uh, that I did uh, doing photos that are kind of outside the ordinary. But then again, if you're working with one subject that's, you know, sort of tedious, DC is a lot of similar things, similar architecture, similar museums, like similar activities, um, and similar like themes like history. So something like that can get really tedious to work with if you don't have fun with like the colors and stuff. Um, you might get bored with telling some of the stories. So I decided to mix it up a lot, and I hope you guys like that in this series. And I'm going to continue my Speak Mom Scraps uh, Easy Way to Use Sequin series um, coming up for the next few videos at least. And let me know if you guys are enjoying it. I know that I am. Here's where I start picking out my color scheme for my sequins. I do pick out some old ones and some new ones. I end up picking out Watch Me Flip, uh, Gold Summer Sunset, Love You More, and I think Hexa Glam is the last one I pick, uh, which I thought was really beautiful. So some of those are from the newest release, um, so you guys got to get those before they sell out. And Spiegel Mom Scraps is doing a new thing where you can pre-order uh, the month ahead of time uh, on a discount, so check out uh, more information on that over there. And I'm going to continue on embellishing. But I also pulled out one from my embellishment kit that I'd made up. It was a homemade embellishment that I actually made previously on Speak Mom Scraps. I did a whole episode about making embellishments, and I did that in real time. And let me know if you guys would like that again. I know you guys enjoyed it. I'm trying to think of new ways to bring out more educational content um, here on the Speak Mom Scraps channel. Um, and I know process videos are a huge hit, so I thought maybe I should um, try to keep doing that, but more educationally. So this one's focusing on easy ways to use sequins. So. 
Now I'm going to start going down my photos. You saw me play with doilies there, and the reason I didn't go for the doilies was because I thought that the circular edges didn't really go with the geometric pattern that I'm working with based on the chevrons that I'd cut out. And I don't think I mentioned this, but the background paper and the chevron paper are from the Dear Lizzie Maggie Holmes collection. In case you guys are interested, I'm finally working with that. Um, and here's where I start embellishing. I ended up using one of those Maggie Holmes clips uh, to the top right of my photo. It's not a perfect match for that pink color, um, but I decided it fits. I'm going to throw it in there. And then I glued a Webster's Pages tab over there that's white and black, and it says today. It's almost not all the way black. It's like that dark gray color. So that's why I thought it was perfect to uh, fit in there. And you guys just saw maybe at the bottom of my screen, uh, I had a cat in my lap at this point, which always makes me nervous, especially when I'm working with wet glue and sequins. Um, but before I do glue down the sequins, um, you'll see me kind of place them around first, because I want to make sure I get a good color start uh, before I start doing the droplets. And I will do a little bit of a zoom in on this so you guys can see it a little bit better. Uh, but first I'm just going to start by layering some of my sequins out and then I'll start gluing them down. So essentially what I'm doing here is trying to get shape, size, and color to be quite variant. I know that with some uh, dripping techniques you'll start with large sequins at the top and then sort of sprinkle them down to the small ones. That's not really what I was going for on this one, but if you'd like an example of that one I can do one as well. Just let me know in the comments down below. But what I'm going to do is like a trickle effect where it starts large to the top and then sprinkles down. Um, now I do go from large to small right at the very end, that way it does give that more eye visual trickling effect, but I am mixing colors, size, and shape again, just so you guys know. I did end up pulling in the Easy Breezy Beautiful mix as well. Now some of these are older mixes, so they might not be available anymore, but the ones that are available I'll have linked down below, and of course you can use my coupon code uh, Caitlin15 for 15% 15 off your next order. And then I even pull some in from Nature Walk because I wanted that minty color that's in that chevron paper, but I really couldn't find it um, in the ones I'd already pulled out. Like I thought Easy Breezy Beautiful Color, or Easy Breezy Beautiful, is that what it's called? Now I'm just confusing myself. I thought that had it, but it was just a reflection off the other sequins. So you can see as I make my way down towards the photo, it'll start getting slimmer and slimmer, um, and that creates that drip or cascading effect, however you want to call it, but I can do other versions of this if you guys are interested, but I picked a ton of different shape sequins. There's round and there's textured and there's little star ones, there's little heart ones, which you'll be able to see in the up close uh, video and photos, um, but I really enjoyed how this one turned out. And then my title ends up being Fun in the Gardens. Uh, the fun is from a Doodle Bug Summer, I think it's their chit chat sets. And then the gardens is from that Webster's Pages uh, sticker sheet, the 12 by 12 sticker sheet I've been using in my kit. And then I use these little basic gray letters to sort of uh, make the at and the um, a little more, pull in more of that dark gray colors because these are supposed to be black stickers, but I find them to be much more of a dark gray. Now I thought that my sequins were beautiful up there, but it needed a little bit more. So I ended up doing a sequin drip down the right hand side as well. Um, this one's much smaller, but I think it brings in more of that color and helps with the diagonal line, uh, the visual line there. So it pulls from the top title across the photos down to here. Uh, it's just a little something, again, mixing in some different shapes, sizes, and colors. Um, that's what really gives it that random look is making sure those three things provide interest for the viewer. And like I mentioned, this is a smaller one, so it was hard to fit, but um, I liked how it came out of the chevron at the top on the left-hand side at the top there, and then at the bottom it goes in back into the chevron. I thought about doing it all the way on, down the page on the left-hand side, but that would have overwhelmed the photos quite a bit. But I am with, very, very happy with how it turned out. Let me know if you guys have tried this technique before. Um, like I said, you'll see them in the close-ups a little bit better. I added a little journaling spot here from We Are Memory Keepers to bring in more of that gold that's in the sequins and in the little barrette that I had included. And while I look for some more stickers, I thought I was going to use some more, but I end up going with some uh, other things instead. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I do end up putting in some of these Amy Tan stickers, which are just cute free stickers and bring in that perfect shade of pink that I was looking for. Uh, but again, I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already for more of my videos and more sparkler videos from Spiegel Mob Scraps. And here are the sequins that I used. Again, you guys can check them out down below if they're still available. And thank you guys again so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.